Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into this week's threat snapshot. So today we're going to be talking about the Cisco breach that was announced earlier this week. And mad props to the way that Cisco and the Talos team handled this. Uh, immediately after their data was exposed on the dark web, they put out a press release as well as this technical blog post really outlining all of the steps that the attacker took in their network. And this is a fantastic article. Highly recommend that you read it. Again, I can imagine a lot of security operations centers, a lot of analysts going around right now, um, their CISOs wondering, hey, if this happened to Cisco, could this happen to us? And I think this is really critical to kind of talk about because obviously a large organization like Cisco has a lot of security controls in place and there was a lot of things that happened in order for this attack to happen. So again, taking a look at this timeline, highly recommend a read through, but Really what happened was um, there was a single employee, um, their personal Gmail account was breached, and of course they were saving their corporate credential, their VPN accounts to their browser. So when the attacker gained control of their personal machine, they saw that, um, they then used a series of voice phishing attacks to get the multi-factor authentication. Um, again, they were spoofing legitimate you know, third parties, maybe it was like a vendor that they work with or you know hey this is the help desk we need to you know make sure that your authentication is working we see some suspicion we need you to accept this mfa push notification again coming up with very believable stories or even just simply again spamming that request to uh, authenticate i mean if you imagine being you know after hours late at night and your phone just keeps blowing up with those requests eventually you might just hit accept for it to go away so this is what happened. Ultimately, the actor gained access to the Cisco network via the VPN, and then um, lots of lots of things went on. Um, again, the threat actor, they did some attribution. Um, this goes back to an initial access broker and a couple of ransomware gangs, but ultimately ransomware wasn't used in this part of the, the attack. Um, but we can actually take a look at some of the things that they um, did use here, their tradecraft. So obviously we talked through the initial access vector and I think really important to highlight is that they did have two-factor authentication in place. And again, this didn't fail because of technical security controls. So good old phishing and security awareness training and, and those sort of things definitely come at play. The post-compromise TTPs here, again, reading through this, there's a lot of things that you can see where, you know, these are very highly detectable activities. They should be suspicious and anomalous within traffic. and probably why the Cisco team internally were able to identify this attacker so quickly, again, before ransomware could de be deployed and boot them out of the network. So again, props and shout out to them. Um, some of the things that they did, again, they got to the domain controller, they used uh, NTDS util to um, dump that file and exfiltrate that. So again, they have all the domain accounts and credentials. Um, they were creating local administrators. So this was the user Z with the password. Uh, obvious things of you know dumping on a local machine the system SAM security hives from the registry um, using built-in tools so again living off the land here using um, a, an LSAS mini dump to again dump LSAS from memory um, hiding their tracks so using uh, WEV util to clear event logs um, modifying firewalls so that they could move around laterally again they were using PS exec they were using um, administrative tools like TeamViewer, Log Me In, um, lots of lots of again common things that are used by a lot of attackers. Again, very highly detectable um, persistence keys. So narrator sticky keys. Again, giving themselves additional persistence mechanisms and backdoors here. Lots of things that as an attacker or as a defender you could say, yep, you know this is suspicious. These are things that you could attack and detect on. Um, some, again, additional really good details about attribution and things, all of our MITRE attack mapping. One thing I do want to point out for those in the know, um, again, they did release some IOCs here. Uh, one in particular here, this 9.9 hash. Um, if you're on VirusTotal, Hybrid Analysis, one of your other sandboxes, you could download a sample, take a look at this. Um, but this one is this uh, CVE 2022-24521, which... Again, I could probably do its own threat snapshot on. This is the common log file system driver. Um, it's a privilege escalation. So again, from a regular user to admin or system on the machine. And this one was actually pretty bad. Um, Want to give an acknowledgement here to the, um, the author, not the authors, but the contributors. So 
Um, this was actually the NSA and CrowdStrike who had tipped off Microsoft that uh, this privilege escalation was being actively exploited. Um, nothing was detecting it and really trying to help kind of close that loop because threat actors were using this in the wild. So this was again back in April. This was pushed out. Obviously, this attack happened in May, so patches and systems hadn't really caught up yet. But um, something to really kind of talk through here. Again, it wasn't really mentioned in their article. It was subtle, but definitely part of this kill chain. So again, one of those things in snap attack, again, we can look at individual threats, we can look at a kill chain like this, and ultimately we're trying to answer that question of, you know, could the Cisco breach happen to my organization? Would we be prepared? How would we respond? How could we detect? How could we hunt for this sort of activity in our network? And the answer is that we've got you covered. So we can take a look here. Again, this is just gonna be a very simple, you know, network, simple machine. We've got our initial access. Again, this would be the, the victim's workstation, and then we've got a domain controller. Again, for the purposes of everything here, we can just kind of play the video and take a look at this on the victim machine. And again, everything that you saw in that blog post, we're able to, you know, replicate in here. So, you know, they used some user discovery, who am I, um, local administrator discovery, looking for local groups. Um, we can actually see here, there's that privilege escalation. So. Um, they're going to copy that um, CLFS uh, executable over to the file system and launch it. And you can see they've got an admin shell that's you know launched interactively. Um, from there, again, they're going to add a new user to the administrator group, that Z user, um, dumping system, SAM, security, other hives, doing the LSAS mini dump, um, setting some persistence mechanisms. Again, we've got the narrator bypass, the uh, sticky keys one. Uh, they can go ahead, they can clear event logs. So you can see some of the event logs that were listed and they could go ahead and again, cover their tracks, clearing system security, you know, other windows event channels. Um, and then ultimately, again, by the time that they've dumped the SAM files, dumped, you know, LSAS, um, it's not impossible to think that they would have a domain administrator account or someone with elevated privileges. So at some point here, they got to the domain controller. You can see here, again, they used internal tools like RDP. So on that domain controller, um, the one thing that they did here that was mentioned was that um, dumping the NTDS file. So you can see the command that they run. We can see that output. Um, and we can see, you know, that last kind of phase here of the attack chain. So again, snap attack view, we can take a look here. We can see all of those attacks that were used as this kill chain. So our threats, those are all labeled with our red stars. We can see the severity. So doing user discovery, again, pretty harmless, not very severe, um, all the way down to things like, you know, dumping, you know, the registry, specifically those hives, dumping NTDS, those are high severity. We can also see all of the detections. We can see our confidence level, the severity of what it's detecting. Um, so lots of cool stuff here. Again, other views that we can take a look. So working backwards, um, this is on the domain controller machine. So we can see here, they launched PowerShell to launch this NTDS util. So several, again, detection opportunities just alone with this attack. Um, you could take a look here. This is the victim machine. So. Again, when they're doing a lot of these, you know, living off the land tools, when they're doing a lot of these built-in things, um, they definitely show very, very well on this sort of graph view. And they, these sort of things stand out, especially when they're happening on one machine or they're happening within a short period of time. Again, we can see all of these activities from, you know, user enumeration, which again, not really that severe. Um, we can see local group administrators enumerating those. Um, we can see that, um, uh, again, the privilege escalation here. So you can see this is launched in a medium integrity context as a regular user, which then launches that cmd.exe. Again, this is running as system. And then again, they're using that system shell to create a user, add it to that local administrator's group. And then from then on here, they're going to, again, open up a PowerShell. They're going to launch commands then as this Z user. And then you can see where they carry out the rest of these uh, attacks. So again, using registry to um, dump SAM system, other hives, um, using registry for persistence with sticky keys backdoor, clearing event logs, um, even this one here where they're doing that, um, that mini dump of LSAS. So 
Again, with snap attack, we can always take a look here at the threats. We can see, again, our red stars. We can also take a look at detections. And a lot of detections here, which again, encourage you to look at in the platform. I'm just gonna take a look at one here. So um, this LSAS memory dumping here, um, we can take a look, we can triage this. We can see that this is validated. We can see it's hit 61 times across all of our attacks. 21 of those are validated. It's high severity, it's high confidence. So we can take a look and we could dive into those logs or if you know, I test it in my environment, I say, yep, hey, this is good. You know, one click, I can actually go ahead and deploy this. So we've got a configured integration right now from Microsoft Sentinel. Um, this is targeting uh, Sysmon data that we have there. So I can one click deploy that to my integration and then this will send that off. So super easy to manage these analytics. And then again, icing on the cake for some of these, uh, if it is a detection that we have a simulation for, you can come over here, you can launch the attack simulation. And you can see for this one, we've got three different atomic red team modules that can launch and run this attack. So I could go ahead, I could say, run this attack on this machine, and I could validate that detection that I just deployed. So really powerful stuff that'll help you go through and improve your security posture. And again, it'll help you really answer those questions of, hey, would I be actually prepared for a breach like the Cisco one? And again, with Snap Attack, hopefully that answer is yes. So thanks for watching this uh, snapshot series. It's weekly, so like, subscribe, and we'll see you next week.